Sulfur dioxide is quite necessary to stop enzymatic and molecular oxygen. Mm -hmm. So wine, oxygen is the enemy of wine. Wine goes stale. Mm -hmm. Wine is halfway between grape juice and vinegar. Our job is to stop the process. Now, the better the wine, the less need there is for preservatives. Yeah. So when you're organically making wine, there's a ceiling of it. Most wineries, and if you've got good quality material, you really don't need that level anyway. It's a right. ceiling. Okay. But the level is about half what you would see normally for, for export restrictions on wine. Right. Okay. We, we, it's determined at about 125 parts per million. And you mentioned preservative free, so no sulphur dioxide whatsoever then? Well, I also have a product which is preservative free and mm. organic, and that means there's no sulphur at all. That's more challenging. Right. Uh, the wine has no shelf life, the wine okay. doesn't get better with time. But that, that's a niche market and quite a rare thing to do and people who are used to um, old fashioned red wines wouldn't perhaps see the, see the quality in that because it's a young raw red. Mm -hmm. But from an organic point of view, anything I do to wine has to be organically certified. If I wanted to okay. use egg whites, I wanted right. to use milk powder, mm -hmm. it in itself has to be organically certified. If I wanted to bottle the wine, it has to be bottled by a certified organic uh, bottling company, right. which means no hypochlorite or chlorinated compounds. So you, you really have to be quite fastidious about every sequence in the chain to get to the end, to the shelf, to the consumer. I, th I think that's the critical point. You, you've raised a really good point about that. I think that to be organic, all levels, you have to be twice as clean as anybody else. We're making wine, we're growing grapes without a whole lot of conventional weapons. Right. So to be a really good organic producer, you have to make it against the tide. You have to be clean, you have to have healthy grapes, and you have to have the respect for the wine you make and, in, and, and make sure that it turns out as good as possible. What organics doesn't say is it automatically doesn't tell you it's gonna be better. Mm -hmm. And that's another problem that we have to encounter in the future. We have to do more advocacy work. We have to get on, and this is a great example, we have to tell the public that the organic process means some sort of hurdle you jump. If you jump the hurdle, you may grow good grapes, you grow good wine, or your milk, or whatever agricultural product mm -hmm. you like, and let the public be the final arbiter of it. But if you're a really good grower of organics, a really good winemaker of organics, the product, in my view, is way, way superior. That's why I do it. Right. I'm not going backwards. Right. So essentially, though, um, you're suggesting it's about um, having a conscience. It's about being sustainable as well, too. Um, whilst you still are a, a businessman and you have to make a profit by it, you've got a few things uh, further ahead in the list of what you're trying to achieve. Yes, that'll be, a, I guess that's the next stage. I mean, organics is a first discipline. It leads you right. to other things, that other pursuits that are even more interesting. Mm -hmm. And so, although I thought organics was going to be an incredibly hard, tough hurdle, mm -hmm. and it has been tough, and it's been expensive, and there's been some failures, what I guess the next progression is that you look at other ways of doing it. And for okay. me, for me, organics means restricting my yield, uh, having a more sustainable factor. So I, not, I, won't, I won't say it happens with all organic producers, but I think the realisation is first and foremost with those who go through this process. It's a realisation that to be, to be continually organic, you really have to you take, you put back in what you take out. Mm -hmm. It's another form of sustainability. It's not necessarily measured, but you do a better job when you think about the sustainable nature of what you do. Because you're restricted, you can't put in inorganic fertilisers. Everything must be organic in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a consequence that comes. Well, Given your 35 years in the industry, you've obviously seen a lot happen over the years, changes and evolution with winemaking techniques or going back to the old school, a lot of farming uh, changes. So that has moved through organics and into biodynamics. You're also involved a lot with the state of New South Wales with where the wine industry is going. What do you see then in the future? Where are we going with the organics biodynamics thing? Will more people take it on? Have we capped it? What, what's in the future? That's really hard to describe. The, the, the market at the moment recognises that organics is, uh, is a niche market. Okay. There's been some take up and some interest. Mm -hmm. I think organics is a genuine quality category. We've got to be seen as not just fundamentalist zealots about, yes. about organics. Yeah. It has to be a genuine category that means that what we are, what we are eating and drinking, what we are farming is, um, is a quality product. And I think it's up to the biological and it's up to the uh, organic producers to go the next step and say that our products are better and prove they're better. Mm. Because we just can't wait for the public to take it up. They're all interested, mm. but we've done not enough to, to be advocates about it, to say this is why we do it, this is what we stand for. Mm. And quality rules mm. for us. So 
Where the big picture is, look, uh, I think the market in Australia doesn't necessarily reward organic producers by an increased price because it is slightly more expensive. Internationally, it's way more important. When I sell wine in Europe, the fact that I'm an organically certified producer is way more important than anything else. So, and I hopefully we'll learn from our European, continental Europe cousins. <laughs>